Okay, so what this applet's going to do is it's going to show you the initial guess, and then it's going to go up to the curve, draw the tangent line in. It's going to use that intersection with the x-axis and that tangent line as your next <coughs> guess, and so on. <coughs> oh, I can see it on my screen, but I can't see it here. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the lights. So this says click anywhere along the x-axis to give a first approximation. Subst subs subsequent clicks near the x-axis restart the process. So let's say I use this as my initial guess. Here's what it's doing. It's drawing in that first tangent line. It's finding that point there. It's going up and drawing the next one. Let me do it again. Okay, it's going here. It's drawing the tangent line over there. <laughs> it's not doing very well. Let me draw. We gotta find a good one. Clear. Does it so dang fast? Okay, that's a good one. Do you guys see where that what that does? So it goes up to that point, it draws the tangent line in, it uses that new point as your new tangent line, and then it goes up, it uses that one as your tangent line until it's slowly approximating what that zero is. So where that intersection is. Does that make sense? You wanna see it again? So it, had, it took about four tries in order to get it. Now, if you had a good guess in the first place, it does it real fast. That's why that one you can barely see anything. It just did one, and then it did another one, and then it's already at the zero. Okay, what happens if I choose it, like, right there? Yeah. Whoa, that's not good. Seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. It's finally getting to a zero. But it's not really the zero I wanted to find in the first place. I wanted to find this zero. And all of a sudden, I'm finding that one. Hmm. So see how it depends on your initial guess? Like sometimes your initial guess can be really, really bad. And you're not gonna you're gonna keep doing this and it's not getting any closer to a zero. Like that took 14 approximations. We wanted to take like one or two approximations. We wanted to be really close. Okay. Let me show you the other one I have. Okay. So it says step one, pick an initial <coughs> guess of the root. So let's say um This one before. Uh, so let's say B1 equals 2. Okay. There's where B1 is equal to. It's not going through the different things. Step 2 picks an initial value. Oh, I'm I don't know. I played this this one last week, but apparently it's not working. So I got to figure out what's wrong with that. All right. So do you guys kind of understand what's happening with Newton's method? Okay. So I don't have to draw the rough sketch because it's kind of hard to draw. Yeah. All right. So let's try this. <coughs> so it says the key to this method is to have a good initial guess. So call your initial guess x0, so x0. It says the next point along the axis is found when you find where the tangent at x0 intersects with the x-axis. All right, so that's going to be x1. It's going to be your next guess. All right, so basically you're starting with the equation of a tangent line, so f prime of x0 is approximately f of x minus f of x0 over x minus x0. Right, makes sense? Tangent line, slope. All right, so this is between any value x comma f of x, so any point on the curve, and your initial guess. So if we multiply our denominator over, you get this equation. It's the one I have right here. Okay, it says let y equal 0 and solve for x. So if I have 0 equals f of x 0 plus f prime of x 0. Why did I let y equal 0? That's the point we're trying to find. We're trying to find the root, right? We're trying to find the zero. So it's crossing the x-axis. So y would be zero in that case. All right, so if I solve for x, I'm going to subtract my f of x zero over. And I'm going to divide by my x minus, or I'm going to divide by my f prime. So 
So if I'm solving for x, I'm just adding the x not over, so x sub 0. So I get x sub 0 minus f of x sub 0 over f prime of x 0. So all of that involves your initial guess. That's going to be equal to x. <coughs> so that x value, that's going to be, this will be the next one. So that's your next guess, x1. And then you'd plug in x1s to find x2. You plug in x2s to find x3. Does it make sense? It's like a recursive formula. You keep plugging things in to find the next one. OK, so that's what you have <coughs> on your paper. So it says, um, successive approximations of Newton's method. If I want to find x sub n plus 1, you use the one before it. You use x sub n. Okay. So let's try this. We're going to do it by hand first. And I'm going to show you a super easy way to do it on your calculator. Okay. All right, so it says use Newton's method with the equation x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1 equals 0 and your initial guess to compute x1 and x2 by hand. Okay, so my f of x is x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1. I'm trying to find when it's equal to 0. I'm trying to find the x-intercept. f prime of x is 3x squared plus 6x. So if I want to find x sub 1, I'm plugging in x sub 0 to find it. So x sub 0 was 1. We were given that. So I have 1 minus f of 1 over f prime of 1. What's f of 1? You guys get 2, so you have 1 plus 3 minus 1, so I think it's 3. <clears throat> and then f prime of 1? 9. So I get 1 minus 1 third, which is 2 thirds. Okay, let's find x2. So for x2, you use the previous value to find x2. So I'm going to use x1. So I have x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. So x1 was 2 thirds, so I have 2 thirds minus, this is where it gets a little hard when you do it by hand, right? <laughs> so what's 2 thirds cubed? 8 27 plus 3 times 2 thirds squared. Yeah, so 12 ninths minus 1. So I get 8 over 27 plus 12 over 9. So let's make it 36 over 27 <coughs> minus 27 over 27. Is it 17 over 27? Brian's good at this mental math. We got one thing going. <laughs> Divided by f prime of 1, or f prime of 2 thirds. <laughs> so we got to find f prime of 2 thirds. So I have 3 times 2 thirds squared, so 4 ninths, plus 6 times 2 thirds. So I get 12 ninths, so let me cancel those, make it easier. So I get 4 thirds plus, cancel those, 4. So 1 and 1 third plus 4, so 5 and 1 third, or 16 thirds. So 17 over 27 what times the reciprocal. 2 thirds minus 17 over 27? Yeah. So uh, minus this whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Molly's getting it for us. <laughs> Even though I said by hand. But what is it, Molly? Uh, <laughs> yeah. What was it? I didn't hear you. Okay, so it's that which, well, as a decimal, it would be about 0.54861. All right, so you could keep doing this, but we don't want to keep doing this with these numbers. We want to find a way to do our, our calculator, which... <coughs> This is what computers are doing. Like calculators, they do this method when they're computing the zero. This is how the algorithm works, okay? So 
So it says use a calculator to find the root to at least four decimal places of accuracy. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So our f of x was x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1. Why did you find x1 and x2? Is what? Like, so our answer is going to be 9 over 1, 3, 4? That's getting closer to our root than what we started with. So let's find it to at least four decimal places. Okay, so here's how I do this. On your y1, thank you. So on your y1, it's always x, like x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1, right? We're going to let that be x. So I'm going to have x minus f of x. So f of x was x to the third plus 3x squared minus 1 divided by f prime. So 3x squared plus 6x. See how that's working? So you can plug in an initial guess for x and then use that answer for your next guess. Use that answer for your next guess. Do you see? Okay, so if we wanted to use 1, is that what we had for our initial x equals 1? So x, I'm going to write x of 0 equals 1. That's my initial guess. Okay, plug that in for your y1. So x minus your f of x. Okay, then go to your table. <coughs> 